I'm Lauren Duffy, and this is the Global Healing Hub. Our next guest is Marla Torres, a critical care nurse and an intuitive care practitioner. Marla went through a long stretch of tragedy and hardships, and I'm so inspired by how she's persevered, even flourished, despite these challenges. Now, she works with people in times of need, using some of these practices that she's learned over her journey. There's some simple yet powerful tools that you can use and that she talks about during this interview. And you can reach out to Marla and all other practitioners interviewed and connect with them directly one-on-one -on -one, through the Global Healing Hub website. So I really hope you check that out. And oh, remember to hit that like button if you could and the subscribe button. And thank you all so much. Take care, enjoy. Through it all, I want to help, especially other women, see that you know they can regain their power, that they don't have to stay in victim mode, they don't have to be beaten down by life, that we have the power to rise up, all of us, not just women, but for me, that's where I feel like my calling is just to encourage, especially other single moms, other women, you know, going through divorce or bankruptcy, like all the in abusive relationships, just you're not alone, <laughs> you know, you're not alone. There's people that have been through it and um, I want to be vocal about it. I want people to know about it because there's hope. So Marla, you're a critical care nurse. You've been one for about 15 years. Um, you are a shamanic practitioner, a Reiki master, um, Akashic Records practitioner, Kundalini and yoga, Kundalini yoga practitioner. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's that's quite a combination. Um, so th this is interesting. So I know we talked a little bit about what we wanted to talk about, mm -hmm. but I, you know, took a little deeper dive into what it is you do, the experiences you've kind of gone through. Um, and I do want to take kind of a closer peek than I was originally planning to um, into, well, you've been through a lot of crap and yeah. <laughs> I want to hear how you've been able to deal with it. And cause there's a lot of people been going through a lot of crap, maybe not as much as you, you've gone through a whole lot, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, so maybe you can, um, you know, inspire some of our listeners as to, you know, what you do to keep yourself um, on the right path. Some of the challenges you've experienced, abuse, bankruptcy, you have an autoimmune disease, two marriages that ended, uh, one with the, one with uh, which ended in a death. All of that's awful. And I would love to hear how you have kind of managed to continue to put one step in front of the other. It's It's been quite a ride. And it's interesting because I remember at one point in my journey, I, I was doing Reiki for a person and she said, you know, somebody told me that those of us that are shamanic healers are destined to like experience a lot of crap, essentially like we're, that we're going to go through a lot of shit, but that helps us in relating to others and also to help give encouragement to others. And I, um, that kind of stuck with me for a while, but I think what really helped me, um, especially I want to say, the last five years or so was my gratitude practice. I was introduced to it through um, Pam Grout. She has a book called Thank and Grow Rich. And I started reading it. And one of the experiments is talking about doing everyday gratitude practice of three things, um, choosing something new every day, <laughs> you know, try not to keep repeating the same things. And I felt like I needed some accountability for it. And so I started a little like Facebook messenger group with some of my friends. And then we've added a lot of people along the way, but um, it's more for me. Some people join in, some people don't, some people just, you know, are enjoying other people's comments, but that has shifted so much for me. And that it's helped keep me grounded and help keep me focused, you know, and be present and, you know, my life might be falling down around me, but if I could stay in gratitude 
and um, just keep focusing on that. That's like helped me tremendously. <laughs> and I really like, I give so much props to that. And people think, you know, it might sound cliche or it might sound like it's too easy, but it really is, has been incredible in shifting things for me and helping me stay focused. And um, more recently, I've been working with being present with like the present process and and realizing that you know if it's happening it's here to teach me something and um so looking at things not happening to me but happening for me and for my growth and being able to um you know not shoot the messenger <laughs> to look right. and see like okay how is this you know how can i learn from this what is this here to teach me and um yeah, I just experienced so much growth through it, through it all. And despite, uh, despite all of these, you know, things that might seem catastrophic, I like to, I like to say that I'm I like the Phoenix rising. I actually have the Phoenix tattooed on my back, just coming up out of the ashes because Is that's that right? what I feel like I've really been able to just step into my power and claim my power. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah. So um, we all have our, our challenges. I've been, through a, a number of them myself and, you know, writing down a list of reasons that you're grateful on a daily basis has been, uh, was one of those exercises. And it, it really does help a lot. You know, you can't be sad and grateful in this right. at the same time, you know? <laughs> so you, you actually put together a Facebook group to help with this. Is that your, kind of a way of keeping yourself accountable or did you just do That's this exactly to kind of show your friends what you were doing or did they also, um, were they also doing the same thing? And it was just a large group of different people kind of expressing their, their gratitude. It was really more just for accountability. Um, some okay. people have also joined in along the way pretty consistently. People have left. I felt like it's not for them and that's fine. You know, like I don't take it personally. Um, nice. But I also, in addition to being accountable, use it for awareness. You know, I think, um, you know, you can be having a pity party, but if somebody else is posting about things to be grateful for and it comes across your, across your notifications and you look and see like, oh, what they say, and they're like, oh yeah, oh, oh, that's, that's happened in my life too. Oh, oh yeah, I am grateful for that. You know, cause it can help you shift your perspective too. And um, I've received a lot of, you know, private messages from people that are part of the group just saying, you know, thank you. You know, thank you for your consistency. Thank you for that. You know, I may not post every day, but I read what you post and it helps me stay grateful. And so that to me, like, you know, this gives me angel bumps. <laughs> like I just feel like this part of this part of my um part of my mission, you know, because I really through it all I want to help, especially other women, see that you know, they can regain their power that they don't have to stay in victim mode. They don't have to be beaten down by life that we have the power to rise up all of us, not just women. But for me, that's where I feel like my calling is just to encourage, especially other single moms, other women, you know, going through divorce or bankruptcy, like all the in abusive relationships, just you're not alone. <laughs> you know, you're not alone. There's people that have been through it. And um, I want to be vocal about it. I want people to know about it because there's hope and you don't have to feel like you're all alone. And, um, you know, that can be that beacon of light for somebody. And then I've fulfilled my purpose, you know, <laughs> that's wonderful. Now, do you still have this, this group, Facebook group? Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah. I'd actually like to learn more about that. That sounds like a, uh, I mean, that to me seems like a service in itself, a, a great way to allow people to focus on the positive. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And the, these hard lessons, you know, growth happens when you are the hardest hit. So when you go to the deepest depths of your soul, in some cases, right, is when you learn the most and you come out on the other end, but man, those are hard lessons to learn. You know, they, I feel like they should be easier. You know, you don't, <laughs> um, I know, I know. And it's funny. Cause like even you saying that it makes you think of, you know, as a mom, like I see how some things that my daughter has already had to go through at a young age. And I wish that I could have like saved her from heart and heartbreak, but I realized, you know, her soul chose this journey, just like my soul chose my journey right. that I'm on. And um, each one of these things that happen is 
this beautiful gift, really. It's really just a beautiful gift of um, growth and expansion. And yeah, I get it feel a little emotional about it. It's just, it's so oh. powerful to be able to realize that, um, yeah, really that it's not happening to you. It's happening for you. It really is a gift. And when you can be aware and in the present to see that, um, I don't know, I think that maybe you can circumvent some even worse shit happening, you know, like, I think that now that I've gone through all this, like, it's, it's I think I've learned lessons, like, really nice. deep, powerful lessons that, you know, I'm not going to repeat the same stuff over and over again, you know. So I'm a big uh, Tony Robbins fan. Mm. And he actually has had a, he had a pretty horrible childhood. Um, you know, his family relations were really bad. And something that he says that, you know, sticks in mind is if he, if his mother was the person that he wished that, oh, shoot, let's see if I can get it right. Anyway, the point was, because he had such a hard childhood, that in itself has made him the man that he is today. If he had had a wonderful childhood, he wouldn't be that person. And he wouldn't be in the habit of fighting the challenges that he does these days to help as many people as he does today. So uh, it's hundred percent sure. True. It's like, you don't look on your past with regret, you know, not looking on your past with regret, but you will be able to realize that. Yeah. A hundred percent. I wouldn't be who I am right now. Like, you know, I wouldn't be having this conversation with you, you know, or I wouldn't be. Yeah. So true. So true. Are you currently practicing as a nurse? I am. Okay. Yes, I still am. Now, my understanding is you 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 left um, one of the hospitals up in uh, was it New York? Is that right? Yes, it was in okay. New York. Okay. I'm really fascinated with uh, Western medicine versus holistic methods, and I love to see the two coming together, or kind of the flip flop between the two. Uh, the nuances between the two. Can you tell me maybe some of your experiences with Western medicine and maybe why you have kind of not gone in a different direction, but, you know, obviously you're going in more of a holistic, um, on more of a holistic path. Definitely. I'm on more of a holistic path. I haven't like written off Western medicine because I think there's value in it. And um, especially like in emergency situations, um, but I definitely have shifted gears significantly from when I first became a nurse in 2007 to now. Um, I, I think it really started to hit home when I had my daughter uh, in 2012 and um, started investigating more things and asking more questions about, you know, like why, you know, why does she have to get five shots at a visit, you know, like, why am I doing this? And um, really going deeper and it started, you know, opening up doors for um, more natural ways. And then when then, um, she was 18 months old, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an autoimmune disease. And um, I just remember like being in the endocrinologist's office and her saying, you know, I'll see you in a year, you know, like, yeah, take the meds, you'll get check your labs in a year. And I was like, I feel like shit. I feel like I'm 90. I'm, you know, in my mid thirties, I feel like I'm 90. I can barely get off the couch to take care of my toddler. And you're just telling me that I have to accept that this is life. And I was not about to accept that. And I felt, um, I felt lost because like, you know, as a nurse, like critical care nurse, I, you know, okay. Yeah. You take the medicine, you get your labs checked and whatever, but I'm just like, it has to be something else. Like I, I just was, I refused to accept the diagnosis as my own. I don't say I have it. <laughs> it was given to me. I don't claim it. I don't even want to own it, you know? Um, but I just had this feeling that I was, I'm just going to heal myself. I wasn't sure how okay. I honestly had no idea how at that moment, um, but I knew that I was not going to accept that, um, you know, I was going to feel like shit like that for the rest of my life. 
you know, I well, was you, you were telling me to- that, you know, you had a conversation with your doctor and your doctor basically was like, you, you are going to feel bad for the rest of your life. This is something that's mm-hmm. incurable. And that's where you are. And you're stuck kind of sort of not in those words. Um, yeah. Yes. And I, I think you mentioned that you, you didn't like what he had to say. You fired him. <laughs> you fired your doctor and, um, and you started doing your own investigation. Yes. And I found um, a functional medicine doctor and when I was explaining to her what I was feeling and all this, and she like, she validated me and she said, yeah, absolutely. You can, you can get better from this. You don't have to be like crap for the rest of your life. And I was just like, wow, this is awesome. And then she moved to Florida and she wasn't treating patients in New York anymore. And I was like, damn. But then um, I found a, what was next homeopathic doctor. And she, um, she actually introduced me to Louise Hay, to Louise Hay's book, You Can Heal Your Life, right. or Heal Your Body, Heal Your Life, or I forget right. how the wording of the title is. But um, that was my, really my first introduction to how symptoms are related to emotional states or issues. And um, she actually released me because she's like, I don't know what else to do for you, you know? And when... I went on my search for, I found a different doctor, um, a naturopathic doctor, and I went to see him and he was like, you know, I can, I can give you supplements. We can order tests. You can do all this stuff. He said, but until you heal at an emotional level, it's not going to matter. It's just like pouring water into a bucket with holes. And in that moment, I was like, oh crap, I'm wasting all this money (laughs) on all these tests and supplements and all that. And he's like, you know, I suggest you see in, in, in the same building, there was a woman who um, is a therapist. I, she was a licensed therapist, but she was also a shamanic Reiki master teacher. And um, he's like, I recommend you see her. And I focus on the other recommendations first. <laughs> and then I would see him again. He's like, I recommend you see Melanie. And I was like, okay. So finally I went and saw Melanie. And um, that really shifted things a lot for me too of, experiencing shamanic Reiki and then she invited me to take one of her classes for shamanic Reiki one and I took like the first day I was like oh my god I'm home like this is like it feels so right and then I took shamanic Reiki two and then shamanic Reiki mask practitioner and just it felt so good and so aligned and I it really did like I know this from another lifetime like I've I know I've been a healer in many lifetimes. And so it just, it felt amazing and started that long process um, of healing all of these deep traumas and emotional wounds from, I'm sure they go back many lifetimes also, but also especially from this lifetime and working through that and just seeing things shift in my life and realizing that, um, I needed to choose me. I needed to love myself. I needed to um, take care of myself first and, you know, make this a priority. And it's been amazing. I have been able to come down off of, I'm not completely off of thyroid replacement medication, but I am on a low dose um, considering where I had been. And this is, I, I credit it all to the, inner work that I've been doing and all these amazing modalities that I've been um, attuned to that I've partaken in and getting to experience because it's just um, seeing the synergy of everything working together. It's just been such a beautiful process. (laughs) Yeah. So one of the things I try and promote is, well, of course, I'm trying to promote many of these methods that a lot of people don't hear about Mm -hmm. because you're not going to see them um, on TV, there's not big money behind it, right? Right. Um, but I want people to know that there are other options, even if they think they're at a dead end in terms of Western medicine. Um, you're not at a dead end. There's a whole world of opportunities and 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 healing methods that are out there. Yeah. You just need to, you know, you need to figure out what works for you because everybody's yeah. going to resonate with something different. Um, you know, so I, I think it's very interesting that, you know, you, you have been taught all these traditional Western medicine, um, methods and 
it sounds like you've kind of made um, a, a little bit of a U-turn, right? <laughs> um, and you really try and promote some of these, these things that, you know, a lot of people can do themselves and feel a yeah. whole lot better. Yes. Rather than, you know, medication or, or, or whatever. Do you have any stories of uh, people not being able to heal the way they'd like through Western medicine and maybe finding that outlet through um, holistic, you know, means? I know I definitely, I have a a dear friend um, who also had received an autoimmune diagnosis. Uh, It was a little bit more obscure of one, not one that's heard of as much as Hashimoto's. And um, she definitely did a lot of Western medicine, the Western medicine route. Um, And then she was introduced to the Akashic Records. I actually introduced her to the Akashic Records. And she just fell in love. Like she, that, that that was her modality. That is what she has um, really mastered and really found so much healing, a profound healing from mm-hmm. that. So coming from, you know, the state of also, again, not being able to function to having a thriving business and, you know, being a busy mom and loving life and really embracing life. And it's just been beautiful to see her transformation too. And just that it's, you know, Western medicine has its place. She still has some, some um, treatments that she utilizes in Western medicine, but the vast majority is alternative medicine that has really been life changing for her. Um, and well, I'll tell you so much of this stuff is, it's really fascinating. I mean, mm-hmm. in addition to the fact that it's helpful, I mean, great, you know, You can heal from it. I mean, that in itself is amazing. It's also like when you get into the Akashic Records, that's some pretty weird stuff, right? It's pretty wild. (laughs) It's pretty wild. So the the healing aside, just learning about it is like, wow, that that is interesting. A lot of people can just hang their hat on that alone. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, as you learn more about your past and why you do what it is you do, you can go back there, kind of rewire um, your awareness changes. You can heal a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, diving into that a little bit further, tell me what is it that you primarily focus on these days when you work with someone, what's kind of at the core of what you do? My intuition I don't really focus on one modality over the other, just okay. you know, intuitively feeling in because everybody's individual. Their journey is so different, you know, um, while you might have some aspects the same as mine um, or similar that I can relate to, there's still so many, it's very individual. So I, I rely on my intuition to just guide me through it. So, you know, it might be focusing more on the Akashic Records with one session or maybe Shamanic Reiki with the other Um you know, doing shamanic journey. That's so beautiful. I'd love to do that with the drumming and just, it's just, uh, feels so good. <laughs> nice. And, um, you know, and I use t- uh, tarot and Oracle cards and crystals and just, you know, and could be adding in some Kundalini yoga too. There's some really powerful mudras and uh, mantras to, to incorporate into your life. I, I did a year of the, um, abundance manifestation one and it was incredible like it really shifted um my view on abundance and and healing so much with my money stories and all of that around lack and so it's powerful it's that they're all powerful modalities and then i also have them i create tantric malas and so they're very powerful tools also and they're beautiful and protective and just it's incredible to have all these things at my disposal and I like I want to learn more and I have like my my gong behind me I do sound healing and um there's just yeah I it's in it's written in my birth chart to just be this lifelong learner so I know that I'm going to continue to learn more and just have all these in my tool belt because it's just I love not being stuck in one spot of like this is your only 
choice. And some people do well with that, with having one, one modality that they really just excel at and, and um, only focus on. But for me, I need to have, I need to have lots of options and just to be able to go with my intuition and be like, okay, you know, even with the shamanic Reiki, you know, yes, I learned the way of our lineage, but sometimes my intuition just says that's not the way to do it for this one person. So I don't, I just follow my intuition and I just do how I'm guided. And my guides are super powerful and they're not going to, you know, steer me wrong. So I just. So when <laughs> someone comes to you, what, what's like a, a typical issue um, that they have? Is it more of kind of like a coaching or is it physical or combination of the two or is it depression or what, what would you say uh, your, your typical client is? I would say it's a combination of physical and coaching. Um, it's, I mean, as you well know, fear has been very prevalent in, in, um, in our society, especially, over, especially over the last few years. And, you know, people have so much fear and just being able to help empower them and just to um, help them see that, Fear is a liar. I have a t-shirt that I love. It says that fear is a liar. And I'd love to wear that. If I should get more of them because I would love to just wear them more often to have people just bring awareness. Like that, that, that fear, that little thing, it's a little liar. It's not true. <laughs> I actually did a really cool workshop recently um, on the little liar. It was a little liar workshop and just being able to like visual, do this, this visualization process of envisioning what that the little voice looks like and um, then coming up with this beautiful, powerful I am statement to um, the truth statement to be able to counteract and just to see even how powerful that is. I've been saying you know, every day for a you know, hundred times for a week so far, and it's already shifting so much and, you know, rewriting so much in my neural pathways that that's such a beautiful tool that I've offered to others also. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really impressed with everything that you've, uh, that you've gone through. Um, absolutely an inspiration for sure. Thank you. So where do you see Western medicine going? Do you think it's, it's going it's down the wrong path or it's going to swing yeah. back around? I feel like it's going down the wrong path. And I feel like um, the focus is not so much the patient. Um, it's more the money and um, they lose sight of the patient in the mix. And that was one of my frustrations with, you know, working bedside um, when I was working bedside in critical care was that I didn't have the time that I wanted to devote to caring for my patients. You know, it's, it, you know, you're pushing meds, you're doing this, you're making sure you're charting and all this stuff. And the patient kind of gets lost in the shuffle a little bit, you know, yeah, you might keep them alive, get them out of the ICU and into the, you know, into the floor, but the med surge floor, um, I always felt like I, you know, I couldn't do as much as I wanted on just the personal touches and, and, you know, you, you feel like you're pushed to do just the bare minimum because there's all these other bureaucratic red tape things that you have to deal with and, you know, and it takes you away from patient care. And, um, that was really sad. That was really hard. I got burnout from that for sure. Um, and you know, people often ask me if I miss bedside nursing, and I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't, um, just because of what it's become. The yeah. pharmaceutical companies are, a uh, pendulum has kind of swung hard in the, not the ideal direction, let's say. Yeah. Um, they're, they're making a whole lot of money these days. And yeah. <laughs> um, in, in my opinion, health doesn't seem to be quite number one. It's more about money and what can they get away with. But I, I hope I'm right. wrong about that. So that yeah. being said, I do feel like there's more people. So I'm backing up a little bit about what you're saying about patient care. So my father's a, a retired pediatrician. Okay. Um, that might be one of the reasons that I'm so um, fascinated by all of this, right? So my, okay. my father, you know, he's not interested. This is not part of his belief system in terms right. of like the energetic stuff and the woo-woo right. stuff. And that's perfectly fine. It was not part of my belief system. Um, now it is. I had a big old metaphorical sledgehammer hit over my head. I opened my eyes. I was like, holy crap. 
this stuff works. I mean, it really works and it's a whole new world. And well, anyway, I digress. So, <laughs> so um, I did hear my father speaking actually just, I think it was yesterday to someone about his practice and why he ended up retiring early. And it had everything to do with um, the time he was allowed to spend with his patients. Mm-hmm. And even when he goes to the, you know, goes in for checkups these days, you know, he's getting older. Um, the doctors are not looking at your, excuse me, the doctors aren't looking at you and your body language. They're actually, they have your, their back faced to you and they're working on the computer. They talk to you and you respond and they make their notes, but they don't see, look at your eyes. They don't see if you're being truthful or passionate or, you know, they're, they're not really reading you. They're not, um, I guess using any intuition, they're just, it's not the same. And the time that is allowed for any given doctor to spend with any given patient is just a small percentage of what it was a couple decades ago. Yeah. Um, so that physical care is not there. And then of course, tiers above that, you have these pharmaceutical companies that are you know, throwing a bunch of money at commercials and people, you know, dive into the commercials and believe that this can cure that and that can cure this. Um, <laughs> and they make a lot of money. It's, it's actually, I, I looked at some statistics. I can't remember the numbers, but um, you know, it's like for every dollar they spend on a commercial, they get um, $3 back or, or something ridiculous like that. So, you know, just total encouragement to throw however much mud at the wall that they can. Um, you know, granted, some of this stuff is works really well and some of it's very helpful, but there's a threshold, in my opinion, that's been crossed. Um, now, I, <laughs> I believe that more people like yourself and myself are becoming more aware of this um, or are becoming more concerned about this issue. Yeah. I also believe that all of this holistic weirdness is becoming more mainstream Um, and people are recognizing that there's other options out there. So, and I do have a number of friends that, um, you know, work in the hospitals and they're doing energy medicine in hospitals and Mm -hmm. insurance companies are actually approving this energy work. I mean, they know they're doing energy work and they're approving it because there's statistic, statistical evidence that it works. Mm-hmm. And because of that, insurance companies are like, oh, well, if it could save us some money, whatever it is, we don't understand why it works, but it does work. So let's look at the bottom line and the stuff seems to save us money. So yes, it's approved. Right. And so I am seeing a, a merger of the two. And I think that's fantastic. I... Yeah, it's it's going to be a battle, I think. It's yes, because the pharmaceutical the companies, yeah, if they you know start losing money to us, they're not going to go down without a fight for sure. Um, but I think that we're kind of coming full circle. We're coming back to our ancestors, what our ancestors knew yes. to be true. You know, the healing in the earth. You know, even just going outside is something so simple as putting your feet bare feet on the grass and just grounding um hugging a tree it sounds silly but oh my god they are so powerful such powerful healers and it's really incredible like i'm so grateful i've created like a little space on my balcony i have this apartment complex we're in there's amazing i can just see them look out my window mature trees just lining at like all on either side and I feel their energy and it feels so good just to go sit on my balcony and just soak that in and just ground. Um, and the medicinal plants, you know, there's, we have, we've been given all we need from the earth, you know, Mama Gaia is, provides us right. with all that we need. Um, and, and I think we're coming back full circle, realizing that. And um, I think it's so beautiful to, to watch that part unfold of like, yeah, this is, this is incredible. It's really incredible. Well, this is fantastic. Is there, is there anything else that you'd like to add before we start to wrap things up? 
just want to encourage people um, to remember they're worthy. I just want to say you're worthy and you're powerful and you can manifest this too. You can manifest your healing. You can manifest what you need, you know, like you've got the power. I, I just really, really, really want people to understand that they, they have the power, the power lies within them in all of us. And um, I'm very passionate about helping people see that, you know, they might think, oh yeah, it's cliche. Oh yeah. Or whatever, but no, really, truly, you know, even as simple as my gratitude practice every day, what I also write down is some I am statements and just, you know, start off with, I am worthy. I am deserving. I am enough. Those first, those are the first three I write down every morning and um, it helps change. It helps rewrite the neural pathways too, you know, and, and you start to realize that you are, you know, like I, I can say that I believe it. I am worthy. You know, I, I didn't, when I didn't believe it when I first started writing it, um, but I do now. And that's what I want people to really realize that even like you had alluded to, or I think you actually mentioned it, that, you know, you can do a lot of this yourself. You don't need me to heal you. You don't need somebody else to heal you. The power is within you. You might need a little guidance along the way, someone to help show you um, and help you to see. We can mirror for each other, someone to help you see like, oh yeah, here. I got this, you know, so just really it's about empowering people and coming into community and just, yeah, we can do this. 